What's up everyone? Right now I'm walking on the streets of Caracas, Venezuela and it's time for me to get a haircut. My hair is long, it's been a while since I've cut it and it's always a funny cultural experience getting a haircut in different countries because when else do you get the chance to spend 20 minutes with a complete stranger? And so here in this neighborhood we're gonna try to find um, a barber shop that's on the street and I'm gonna show you guys what it's like to get a haircut in Venezuela. Quickly before we continue the story, I want to let you know that I picked up 10 awesome postcards from the streets of Caracas as well as 10 different 10,000 banknotes which are really valuable now because they're becoming extinct. And you can be a winner if you sign up for my email newsletter in the link below. That's it. I'll be choosing winners at random and I'll be sending you a personal note uh, with a bill. Okay, back to the story. Right there in the green umbrella. Look. <laughs> right here. We just literally like found the place as we're right. talking. Literally. Right here. Hola amigo, can you cut my hair? But I want to have like number number three, number three for everything. I don't want the fancy like street cut. Dice que solo quiere que le pase la máquina número tres en todo el pelo y ya, rapidito, tres minutos corte algo así. Yeah. Yeah. Vamos, can you hold my hat? ¿Cuánto? ¿Cuánto cuesta? ¿Cuánto cuesta? One dollar. One dollar. Yeah. One dollar for a street cut here in Caracas. Yeah, I think that's the cheapest thing that you can do here in Caracas. Believe it or not, I've been waiting for years to make a video on haircuts because I really enjoy them. Every time, they push me out of my comfort zone and force me to have a conversation with someone who speaks a different language and doesn't understand the style that I want. I'm about to get a haircut on the street. Haircut. Okay. 60,000. Uh, 60,000. 60,000. No. Okay. Look how dirty the utensils are. So dirty. <laughs> Walking in the door of any random barber shop once a month is something I often think about and plan for since I'm always on the road. Getting a haircut here in Diyarbakir, Turkey. I try to predict which cultures would have the most interesting strangers to hang out with for a half hour. This should be an experience for sure. Heading into a barber shop now in Damascus. Get a haircut, trim the beard. Honestly, that was the top five haircut I've had in my entire life and it was only five bucks. The guy was so nice, perfect. I can't tell you the exact number of countries that I've gotten a fresh chop in, but it's well over 50. Getting a haircut in Zambia. From St. Lucia to Vietnam to India and Turkey. For the record, this guy sucks. He keeps leaving me and talking to his friends. Some cuts I've gotten were less than a buck on a street corner, while others were done in a fancy salon. Regardless of the country, it's always a memorable experience, and I highly, highly recommend it. Well, most of the time. Hold on, stop, stop. He's just touching the edges of my no, hair. Tell him to funny. actually no, no. cut it. No, he, he cut my neck. Bleeding. Yeah. Thankfully, here in Venezuela, I can speak Spanish, so this one won't be too much of a culture shock. Although their Spanish is much quicker than the Spanish I learned in high school. Despite the fact that I'm currently in one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in Caracas, which is so-called the most dangerous city in the entire world, I'm gonna go out on a whim here and I'm fully ready to document the next 30 minutes of my life. Right now I'm getting a haircut on the streets of Caracas, Venezuela, literally on the street, and it costs only a dollar. And so the last time I got my haircut was in Afghanistan about six weeks ago on the street. <laughs> oh, guy never hide us, hide. Ow, he yanked the hair. Holy crap. That was an experience. Out of all the haircuts I've gotten, I think that was the, the wildest. Ask him how many years he's been cutting hair on the street. He said that he's been for a short time here in the streets before he used to work in a mall or a barbershop and he decided to get independent without paying rent. <laughs> There's a guy watching us in the window right there. <laughs> so yeah, that's what's happening right now. And he's actually doing a pretty good job so far. This barber was surely getting every fine detail that I could imagine and I was pleasantly surprised by how it was turning out. 
Now he's taking a knife to polish the beard, which is making me a little nervous because there's a knife on my face from a dude that I don't know. It's funny what we perceive as dangerous, right? Here I am with a young dude that I just met in Caracas who was holding a knife to my throat. One slip and I'm gone. I gotta stop talking because he's right next to my mouth. But to any local here, it's nothing alarming. Just a man doing his job and hustling to get by. Through all of my haircuts around the world, I've learned to have full trust in people and just go with the flow. Take a deep breath, <sighs> smile, and enjoy the ride. Ask him if he's ever cut red hair before. No, que a ver si había cortado pelirrojo así antes, ¿no? No. Never. No. First time that he ever cut them with red hair. It smells like pee over here. Yeah. I think that people are peeing in this alleyway. That was a great haircut. This guy did a really good job. Like. Nine out of ten. Little perfume, man, you know. Look pretty, smell pretty. It burns. Because he just shaved my ah. Burns. Muchísimas <laughs> gracias, amigo. That was a damn good haircut. Only a dollar. <laughs> Look at the damage on the floor. <laughs> Red hair. Red hair everywhere. So the next time you find yourself on the road, I encourage you to walk inside a random salon or barbershop or even find a street corner and get a haircut. The more we put ourselves in these uncomfortable situations, the more confident we grow, the more wiser we become, and the more stories we will have to tell our grandkids someday. Because in the end, isn't that the reason why we travel in the first place? Guys, I have tons of amazing content coming up around Venezuela. If you want to follow the trip live, hit me up on Instagram, at Trubinsky. I got tons of amazing stuff coming up. I appreciate all your support these days, watching my videos. I'm just uh, loving life these days, guys. So with that being said, have an awesome day, guys, and I'll see you more with some amazing content around Venezuela. Peace. Quick reminder guys, if you want to win a postcard with a handwritten message along with a 10,000 Bolivares banknote included in it, all you have to do is sign up for my email newsletter in the link in the description below. Twice a month I send out a really cool newsletter with travel updates, with new videos, with life hacks, with travel hacks, and with a bunch of promotions and deals that I come across. And so I would love to send these to you guys. All you have to do is sign up and I will be choosing winners at random. Thank you so much and stay tuned for the next video. It's always happens. What? How much does he need? 50. Hang on. 50, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. Okay. okay. I'll get you a tip. Okay. Thank you. Just for you. Okay. <laughs> This is too small. Uh, no, the same as the hair. Two. Two. The same the as number. This is tooth is much smaller than the hair. Yeah, we're looking. Right. You don't like it. Yeah. How's it good? It's really good. Yeah. I, I like, like it. it. I really like it. Okay. So you don't, uh, yeah, they do it to, what do you call it, to make shape. I don't like what he's doing, man. Tell him to actually cut it. No, but he's like barely touching my hair. Tell him to actually cut it off. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and ring that little bell so you can get notified on all my upcoming videos as I take you to every single country in the world.